Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel, Creative Grandma. Today's video, I have a quick and easy berry stitch dishcloth. So I picked the Premier Home Cotton for this project, but let me show you the three samples that I made. Now these are all made with the splash colors. Now the first one, you can see this beautiful pink splash. You can see that beautiful texture of the stitch pattern. This is the front. And when you turn it over, this is the back. The back is nice and smooth. And the front has that little bit of textured stitch pattern. We finished this off with a simple half double crochet border. And I'll walk you step by step through how to make this quick and easy dishcloth. So that's my first sample. The second one I made was with the Yellow Splash. This is a beautiful, one of their newer colors. It's been out for a while, but one of the newer colors. And then the last color I chose was this beautiful mint green splash color. Isn't that pretty? And here it's been raining. We had a little snow the other day. And I thought I need something bright and cheerful. So I thought I'd make a quick and easy dishcloth just to pass the time on a dreary day. Now these make excellent dishcloths. If you like them as washcloths, you can use a DK weight for a more delicate facial cloth. You just increase your chain and use a stitch count of an even number. Now for this pattern, again, I use the Premier Home Cotton. This is one of my favorite yarns that I do use when I make dishcloths along with a couple other brands. So you can use whichever brand you prefer or you could choose one of these beautiful splash colors or you can choose any of the Premier Home Cotton colors that Premier offers. Now the solid colors have more yardage, so for this video I'm just going to give you the yardage for the splash colors because that's what I use. Now it does take one skein of yarn for each dishcloth. Now this yarn comes in a 96 yard skein, 88 meters, 1.94 ounces, and 55 grams. It's 85% recycled cotton and 15% polyester. And that extra 15% polyester helps keep your dishcloths looking brighter for longer. Now this is a medium number four weight yarn. It is machine wash warm, tumble dry, low heat. And again, they have many beautiful colors. And here's another color of that splash. This color is Ocean Splash, color 44-27. Now for the video, I use this beautiful mint green splash. So again, you're going to need one skein for each dishcloth you want to make. You're also going to need a size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. So before we begin, let me just measure the dishcloth. It's roughly about 9 inches by 9 inches. So this comes out to 9 inches exactly across. And when you measure it from the bottom to the top, it's 9 inches. So just the perfect size for a dishcloth. So go ahead, grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get our project started. To begin our project, I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. Now I want to remind everyone all my crochet tutorials are filmed using USA crochet terms. We're going to begin and we're going to chain 26. You're going to yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. This creates your first chain. That's one, two, three, four, Five, continue until you have 26 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my 26 chains made. Now if you want to make your dishcloth larger then you just use an even number chain. For this dishcloth I'm using Stitch of the Week pattern number 24, the delicate berry stitch. So again you can use this stitch for this dishcloth, for a scarf, for a blanket, anything you choose. So again I have a starting chain of 26. If you want to adjust the size, then just use an even number chain. So now we're ready to begin row one. 
For row one, I am working into the back loops. So when you look at the back side of the chain, you're going to see three loops. One, two, three. I'm going right into the center strand right here. So we're going to skip the first chain insert into the back strand, center strand of the next chain, yarn over, pull through that chain, you have two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made your single crochet. Go to the next chain, flip your chain over, insert under the center strand of that chain, work your single crochet. And we're going to repeat this across to the end of the row. Go to your next chain, Flip your chain over, insert into that center strand of yarn of the chain on the back side, work your single crochet. Let's do it one more time. Go to your next chain, flip your chain over, and insert into the center strand or the back bump, work your single crochet. So go ahead and continue and work one single crochet into the back center strand on the back side of each chain across and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. I worked one single crochet into the back bump of each chain across starting in the second chain. And when you look at your work, you'll notice this is the top of your work. But when you go into the back bump, your bottom looks the same as the top. You have that beautiful edging and it makes it so much easier to do the border on your project. So now we're ready to begin row two. For row two, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one. You're going to insert under the top two loops of that very first stitch, work a single crochet. Now we're going to work our berry stitch. To work the berry stitch, you're going to insert into the next stitch under the top two loops. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. That is your berry stitch. And then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. And when you single crochet, it pulls this taller stitch down and just makes a little bit of texture. So let's do the repeat again. You're going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull back through. You're going to chain two, one and two. You're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Then single crochet into the next stitch. Let's do it again. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. Your berry stitch is made. Then single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue. You're going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You're going to chain two, and then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. Your berry stitch is made. You're going to single crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two. This is what your work should look like. You just work the berry stitch and a single crochet across to the end of the row and you end with a single crochet into that last stitch. Now we're ready to begin row three. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the top of that very first stitch going right under the top two loops work a single crochet. And if you're having trouble seeing your stitches, just turn your work towards you and you can see the top of the stitches. Insert into the top of the next stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three. 
we worked one single crochet in each stitch across and you're going to have a stitch count of 25 stitches for every row you do. Your stitch count will not change. So now we're ready to begin row four. For row four, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into that very first stitch, work a single crochet single crochet into the next stitch and now we're going to start our repeat working the berry stitch and then a single crochet stitch and then we're going to work that across to within the last stitch so let's begin you're going to insert into the next stitch yarn over and pull through you're going to chain two yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Single crochet into the next stitch. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You're going to chain two, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You're going to chain two, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. Single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that down the length until you have one stitch remaining and I'll meet you at the last stitch. I'm over at the end of row four. This is what your work should look like. I just done my last repeat of a berry stitch and a single crochet, and you should have one stitch remaining. You're going to end the row by working a single crochet into that last stitch. Row four is finished. So now we're ready to begin row five. So row five is a simple single crochet row. To begin row five, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into that very first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And the puff stitches might end up pushing out on the back, getting in your way, so just make sure you turn your work, get under the top two loops, work your single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row five. I'm over at the end of row five. This is what your work should look like. You are on the wrong side. You worked one single crochet in each stitch across and you should have a total of 25 stitches. So now to continue working on your dishcloth, you can click back on the video and you're going to repeat row two through row five until you have a total of 28 rows. Now this is a four row repeat. Again, you're repeating rows two, three, four, and five for the pattern. And you're gonna work until you have a total of 28 rows. So you're actually ending with row four for your last row. So go ahead and continue and repeat rows two through five until you have 28 rows ending with row four. I'll meet you at the end of row 28. I'm over at the end of row 28. This is what your work should look like. Look at that beautiful texture on that dishcloth. So now again, you're going to end with row four with that textured row. And now we're going to start the border. So we're going to start right where we ended and we're going to start the border by working down the side and around the other three sides. And that's why I say when you work in that back bump, look how easy it is to see those stitches on the bottom of your work. So let's go ahead and begin our border. To begin our border, we're going to chain one and then we're going to rotate our work and we're going to start working down the side in the row end stitches. 
we're going to work two half double crochet into this first row end stitch. So this is the last stitch you made. You chained one and I'm working right in the center of that stitch for the row end stitch. You're going to yarn over, insert into that stitch going right through the center, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Half double crochet back into that same row end stitch. Now we're going to work one half double crochet in each row end stitch down to within the last stitch. So if you're not sure where your row end stitch is, try to go to the stitches farther in on your dishcloth and just follow those stitches down. So you're going to have your single crochet row and then you're going to have that textured row. So it helps make it easier to find that row end stitch. So we're going into the next single crochet row end stitch. So yarn over, insert into the end stitch, work a half double crochet. Now we're going into the next row end stitch so I can see my textured stitches here so I follow them down. This is my next row end stitch, work a half double crochet. Then you have your single crochet row end stitch, half double crochet into that next row end stitch. And then you're going to continue and work one half double crochet in each row end stitch down until you have one row end stitch remaining. So again, work one half double crochet in each row end stitch until you get to the very last row and I'll meet you there. I'm over at our first corner and you should have one row end stitch remaining. This is what our work should look like. And now in the last stitch, you want to work two half double crochets. One, and two. You're going to rotate your work. Now we're going to work across the bottom of our dishcloth and this is why it's so important when you go in the back bump how easy it is to see those stitches. So this is the first stitch across the bottom and we're going to work two half double crochet into that first stitch. One, and two. Now we're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch across to within the last stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch across until you have one stitch remaining and I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at my next corner. We worked one half double crochet in each stitch across and now we're over at the last stitch. We're going to work two half double crochet into the last stitch. One and two. You're going to rotate your work and now we're going to work down the side the same as we've done on the other side. We're going to work two half double crochet into the first row end stitch. So the first row end stitch is going to be the single crochet row end stitch right here. So yarn over, insert into that first row end stitch and work two half double crochets. One, and two. Then you're going to half double crochet into the next row end stitch and again just follow those stitches and this is your textured row, this is your single crochet row, textured row, and that's how you can find your row end stitches. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch, half double crochet into the next row end stitch. Continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch across until you have one row end stitch remaining and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner and when you look at your work, you're going to work in this larger 
row end stitch and then your last row end stitch is right here where you see the first stitch going across the side so in this stitch here we're going to work two half double crochet into the last row end stitch yarn over insert into that last row end stitch work two half double crochets one and two you're going to rotate your work and now we're going to be working across the top of our dishcloth very easy to see the top of those stitches and we're going to go right back into that very first stitch. We went into the side of the stitch, now we're going into the top of the stitch. Work two half double crochet into the top of that first stitch across. One, and two. Now we're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch across until one stitch remains half double crochet into the next stitch going under the top two loops work your half double crochet half double crochet into the next stitch half double crochet into the next stitch continue and work one half double crochet until you have one stitch remaining and I'll meet you at the next corner so I'm over at my next corner and when you look at your work, this is not the last stitch. It looks like the last stitch, but when you get over to the side to where you started, the last stitch is at the base of these beginning two half double crochet stitches. You worked in the side of the stitch, but now we're going to work into the top of this stitch. You're going to work two half double crochet into that last stitch in the top of the stitch. One, and two and now we're just going to join in the top of that first half double crochet insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet yarn over pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook so our dishcloth is finished I'm going to fasten off and again I like to leave that longer length I chain two pull my hook up yarn out grab pinch pull down and then you're going to take a yarn needle flip your dishcloth over on the back and then weave it in through and then because it's long enough i always weave it through a second time and even a third time to really secure it because when you're washing the dishes sometimes your ends can work their way out so again this is the front of our dishcloth that has a very beautiful textured look and then the back of the dishcloth has a flatter, smooth look. So that is the tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed making your dishcloth. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here on Creative Grandma's channel. So until next time, stay inspired and happy crocheting.